Hi, Jamie King, Medicine Drum LLC, Healing Heart and Soul. Today is in February 20, 2015. I'm here in my studio, Medicine Drum Studio, to talk to you about life, about what it is we're doing here. Why, who am I and why am I here, right? Um, the longer I live, the more I ask that question, it seems. And because there, there seems to be more and more questions, the more we look, the deeper we look, the more questions we find we have. And the answers seem to be coming. And the more answers that come, the deeper we go. And the more answers that come, the more curious we become about, well, if that's the answer, then this, if that, and then this. And here we go. We, we, it's like a never-ending journey, isn't it? Life is a never-ending, never-ending journey. And when I look back at my life, I was taught to make goals and plan and have a calendar and do this and this and this and do a financial planning and business plan and all of that stuff. I've never ever been able to get myself to do that. Never been able to get myself to do that. And so it makes me curious. I've, is is am I doing it wrong? Is that the way life is supposed to be? And I'm not doing what we're supposed to do in life. Well, the more I look back and the more I'm in this moment and the more I kind of look forward, even though I'm realizing that this moment is all I have, I'm understanding that spirit, soul, God, whoever, however you want to look at pure consciousness, source energy, that is me is really guiding me along the way. And the more I can take time either to meditate or to just sit and be quiet. I've had a hard time getting into a real meditative practice the same way I've had a hard time setting goals and following goals. I mean, it's easy to set goals, but it's the follow through and it's the continually um, staying on track toward those goals and doing all the small little goals that get you to the big goal that I have a hard time with. And so for me, I'm realizing that my comfort level and how I operate has more to do with being quiet, mostly out in nature, under the trees, walking in the woods where there's no people, where I'm one with nature and one with spirit, one with God, one with the creator of all things which is who I am. So it's like going out into the woods to find myself. <clears throat> Pardon me. And when I do that, I realize that I get messages. And I get profound messages, even though they may be very simple and basic. That is one of the places where I, I actually experienced one of my spirit guides. I had received his name in a, in a journey that I'd gone on, or in, I forget how I found his name, but I was meditating, I was doing my prayers every day and every day I would say hello to him even though I'd never met him but one day I was out in the woods walking this was probably 10 years ago and I love to go out into the woods and get off the trail I know that can be dangerous for some people but I am very good with directions and where the sun is and the time of day and how I how I went and so um, you need to really be a good trailblazer to walk in the woods in the way I do but I went off the trail and I follow, and another thing you do up here in New Hampshire is you follow the stone walls. And stone walls usually lead you somewhere and you remember big trees, like big pine trees. So I look up in the sky and I see, oh, that's the tree I wanted to get to. So finding my way in the forest is something I've learned to do since I was very small and I love to do that. But I was walking in the woods one day, one afternoon up in uh, Sutton, New Hampshire, where I used to live. And briefly, I, I, I got this overwhelming feeling to turn around behind me because I could feel something behind me. I turned around and briefly saw, saw my spirit guide. How did I know that was him? I don't know, but his name came to me. And he was a huge mountain man, bigger than a normal man. He was just huge. He had this fur hat on, came coming down over his ears. It was an instant and he was gone but he told me his name and I already knew his name, but I had never met him. That's the type of thing that happens to me out in the forest, out in the woods, out in nature, out where I come from, where I belong. <clears throat> so I'm giving you this little tidbit of information to give you an opportunity to think about where is it that you get these inspirations? Where do you connect in with your 
your higher self, your source energy, your guides. Um, people do it in many different ways. And I just wanted to give you one example of how I have come to meet one of my guides. And I'm very comfortable with him. And he's very comfortable with me. And he has been a very big blessing in my life for a long time. So thank you for joining me. I hope you got a little bit out of this guidance and listening to our guides and listening to our intuition, our synchronicities, paying attention is really what makes life go in the right direction for us, what guides me anyway. It's always nudging me in the right direction when I stop and listen and pay attention to what my guidance is telling me, what God is telling me or source energy or that particular guide that I met in the woods that day, even though I met him spiritually by receiving his name. That was such a blessing to really see him for the first time and, and he acknowledged who he was to me by his name just flooding into my awareness. I turned around and there he was, only for an instant, maybe longer next time. So until I meet you again, well, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the winter and I hope you're not snowed in, but that may be a good thing, a good time for you to be quiet. And you know what I like to do is just go out and lay in the snow. I, I put on my snow suit just like a little kid I have my snow boots, I have my snow pants, they're bibs, they come right up, my snow jacket and a full full hat, winter hat, put up my hood, put my mittens on, <laughs> and I'll go out, and you can't go too far because you'll get buried in the snow up here where we have so much snow, it could be like quicksand and you can't get out of it, so you don't go, want to go too far off the path, but just go out and flop into the snow, <sighs> especially after shoveling and being getting all sweaty and hot, <laughs> which happens to me a lot. If you do it after that and it is so refreshing and you're just being cradled by this amazing, amazing snow, water, water, it's the water element, isn't it? And you can get, just lay there in that element no matter where you are and just be quiet. And you'll be amazed at what information that can bring into you as well because you're immersing yourself, you're burying yourself in water. Crystallized water is snow. Again, until we meet again next time, I hope this wasn't too long for you, a video, but please stay tuned for the next little nugget of information that I'll be passing your way from here in my Medicine Drum studio. And so until then, remember, your heart, your heart knows the way. Be well.